Some alarming data from the World Health Organization shows that less than 2% of individuals in low-income countries have received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. Here to discuss is the World's Health, World Health Organization's chief scientist, Dr. Samya Swaminathan. Dr. Swaminathan, thank you for being with us. Those are some disturbing numbers, and I know that your organization has announced a goal. You want to get 10% of the world's population vaccinated by the end of September, 40% by the end of the year, and 70% by mid-2022. How are you going to make this happen? And what can countries, rich, wealthy countries like the United States, do to help make that happen? Thank you so much for having me on your show and for this question, which is so important. So what we need to do is to vaccinate, starting from the most vulnerable, um, and then gradually step up to cover more and more of the adult population. And the way we can do that at the moment is by a fair and equitable sharing of the vaccine doses that are available. We know that there's enough vaccine supplies and production in the world today. And what we need is a political will of the G20 countries. The G20 are the countries that have the money, the resources, the manufacturing capacity, and the vaccine supplies. And if the G20 leaders decide that they will share what they have equitably, before, for example, starting to administer third doses and booster doses to their own populations. If they would share what's available today with COVAX, which is the global mechanism set up by WHO, by Gavi, CEPI, UNICEF, it's the partnership that was set up just to do exactly this, is to share vaccines that are developed uh, globally and, and provide people who need them, uh, you know, in, in the order in which they should they should be prioritized. In fact, we've seen that the World Health Organization has called on a global moratorium for those third shots, those booster shots, just as they've started to be uh, authorized here in this country, in the United States, for those who are most vulnerable. How concerned are you about what the U.S. is doing in other countries, allowing those third shots to be administered now to people who need them? Firstly, we do not have the science at the moment to definitely tell us that certain groups of people are going to need boosters. It might well be that the elderly do need boosters, but we don't know that for sure. We need to wait and follow up people who've been vaccinated to see if efficacy actually declines over time. And, and also the question of the variants, maybe different variants will need additional boosters. That's the first thing that we're still waiting for the science and the data and the research to be done. The second thing is, doesn't make sense when you have billions of people across the world who have not had their first and second doses of vaccine for some individuals in some countries to be receiving a third dose when we don't even need, know if they need it. And so that's the equity and the moral argument. And, the, and that's the only way we can prevent these preventable deaths that are occurring today is to provide the primary course of vaccination to those brave nurses and doctors, as well as to the elderly living in the countries which have not received any vaccines or very little vaccines so far. So there are really two, I think, good arguments for the WHO to be, to be calling on this time-limited moratorium for the next couple of months so that all countries can catch up and get to that level of 10% minimum of the population before we even start thinking about boosters. And Dr. Swaminatha, I know that you are a pediatrician by trade, and we know that at least in this country specifically, anyone under the age of 12 cannot and is not eligible for a vaccine as of yet. What have you noticed about the world's children dealing with this Delta variant specifically? I think this, again, is a very important issue. And as a pediatrician, as a mother, you know, we're all concerned about our children. We want to protect them, and we don't want them to get sick and, and certainly don't we want to avoid all pediatric deaths. What we've seen in this um, in this pandemic is that children can get infected um, just as easily as adults can get infected, especially older children. Um, but luckily, they have a much much lower risk of getting severely ill. Um, of you know, of the eighty or ninety million children in the U.S., uh, there have been about three hundred and fifty or so pediatric deaths that have been recorded. And it's the same around the world. Very low rates of hospitalization, very low rates of the chances of dying. Of course, some children do get ill. They need to be hospitalized. Some of them do suffer from some complications. 
but the rates are very, very low compared to adults. And what the WHO is recommending is that adolescents who have underlying conditions that make them more likely to get severe disease, just like adults with underlying conditions, uh, make them more vulnerable, should receive uh, one of the vaccines that's been approved for use in children, which are only these two, really. Uh, while there are clinical trials going on on uh, vaccine use in children uh, using other vaccines. And at the moment, really, it's uh, I think children have suffered much more from the consequences of the pandemic in terms of you know, 1.6 billion children were out of school and hundreds of millions of children around the world still do not have access to online learning because they live in areas of the world with poor internet connectivity. They've missed out on school meals, on nutrition, so it's not only their education, but their mental and physical and cognitive health, which is also suffering. So we need to prioritize the reopening of schools, educational institutions while taking precautions. And we know the public health measures that can reduce the chances of infection. WHO's chief scientist, Dr. Swamya Swaminathan, thank you so much for being with us. We certainly appreciate your expertise in this. Thank you. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.